In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to use one sound to trigger another, a technique referred to as trigger gating, or a form of rhythmic gating. This is a technique that can be used in countless different ways, but for our purposes, I'll put it in the setting of the drum and bass genre using a drum break to trigger a synth sound. First, I want you to listen to the finished product and keep it in mind as we go through these steps. So what is a gate? A gate is a device or plugin that is used to control the volume of an audio signal. In its most simple form, a gate allows a signal to pass through only when it's above a set threshold, or when the gate is open. If the signal falls below the threshold, the gate is closed and no signal is allowed to pass, or the signal is substantially reduced. Let's take a listen to what that sounds like. Here's a drum break with a native Ableton noise gate applied to it. Now let me explain the controls. Remember, the purpose of a gate is to either allow or disallow sound from coming through and being audible. The threshold sets the level at which the gate will open and allow the sound through. If we set the threshold to minus 40 dB, that means that anything over minus 40 dB will be allowed through. So basically, you can hear everything. Decibels are a logarithmic measure of sound level. They're the ratio of two other units. I won't get into it any further in this video, but I recommend understanding the use of the term dB in audio. Now check out this parameter. This is the attenuation. When set at its lowest setting to negative infinite dB, the gate will mute the signal completely. So in this setting, anything below minus 40 dB will be muted. Now anything below minus 20 dB will be muted. And now anything below about minus 7 dB or so will be muted. This means you can only hear the loudest transients in the beat. I'll get into attack, hold, and release later, but just know that the attack control sets the time for the gate to change from closed to open, much like a fade-in. The hold control determines the amount of time that the gate will stay open after the signal falls below the threshold, and the release controls the amount of time that it takes for the gate to close after the hold time expires like a fade out. All right, now let's get into the gated synth stuff. I've got my drum break on an audio track. On a MIDI track, I've got an instance of analog and specifically the preset called 10 saws. I'll double click to add a MIDI clip here. And then I will draw 16th notes across the entire clip. I'll put them all on an E. If you draw the first one, make sure it's highlighted and then click Control D, you can just duplicate that note across the entire clip. Now notice that when we play this, it's just a break with a bunch of 16th notes playing on the analog instrument. So let's drag a gate onto our synth track. And now let's unfold the device parameters by clicking on this triangle. Ableton's gate has a great sidechain function, as does its compressor, so let's activate the sidechain function and tell it to take audio from our drum break. Now what this does is it tells the gate to allow the synth to play when the sidechain source, in this case our break, gets above a certain threshold. Let's listen. The gain controls the level of the incoming sound source, and dry-wet controls how much of the effect is applied to our synth. Let's just make this pattern more interesting by moving some notes around. Select a note, hold shift, and press up, and that will move the note up exactly one octave. I'm just going to play with this pattern by adding a couple octaves and half-step intervals. Now watch what happens when I play with the threshold parameter on my gate device. Put simply, it's making the synth notes seem longer or shorter. Decreasing the threshold allows more of the beat to trigger the synth. 
and increasing the threshold allows only the louder parts to trigger the synth. Okay, let's take a quick look at our attack, hold, and release parameters. Remember the earlier explanation of what they do, and I will put some text on the screen while I play with the parameters. Now let's take a quick look at another trick. We can keep the trigger break playing and creating that same rhythm in our synth, but make the break itself inaudible and throw a different drum beat on our track. Activate the gate on our trigger drum track and raise the threshold all the way up to plus 3 dB. That means only audio over plus 3 dB will play, meaning nothing in this case will play. Then make sure our sidechain is set to receive audio from the trigger channel pre-effects. This means that we're allowing the trigger break to do its triggering of our synth, but the break itself is inaudible. Now we can just add a different drum pattern and totally switch up the feel. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this tutorial useful and easy enough to follow. Visit Lynch Audio for more free audio resources and tutorials, and I'm always open to suggestion if you've got some ideas for tutorials. Thanks.